Hi. So this week we're going to talk some about bidding and um, about the auction. Um, and I've sent along a little kind of philosophy sheet almost. Could, just a discussion about how uh, bidding is very dynamic. It's, uh, I, I call it uh, um, caveman. We talk in caveman when we're bidding. We, when we make like 26 or so grunts. And uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot that we do. We don't say, we don't have all these words that we can use. So we have to understand the context. Uh, maybe that's just how cavemen did it too. I don't know. But but um, the idea is that uh, each bid carries a meaning besides what we've memorized it to mean. I mean, we know that we open a 13.9 with five spades. We open one spade. I mean, that's sort of a memorized thing. But we don't really think much about what that actually means. Um, and, and as each bid happens, it, we actually can develop a very complex idea of what each what the partnership has. Each hand is also each bid is also dynamic. It's either forcing or non-forcing. Um, it can it can ask you to take an action. It can command you to take an action. It can ask for information, or if it's in response to any of these asking bids, it can simply be providing information and carry no other meaning except answering the question. So, anyways. I'm going to do what I want to do is just do a couple of hands here so we get the idea. We'll talk more about this on Wednesday. So what I've got is uh, the teaching table up, and I've just set the deal so that uh, north south will get most of the points, and hopefully that means we'll do most of the bidding. Um, so uh, we'll start in in uh, south's hand here. It's the dealer. We've got seven, six, thirteen, four, seventeen points, right? And I've often, I often say you got to name your hand before you can really start bidding. Of course, this is a invitational balanced hand, also known as one no trump, right? 15 to 17 and balanced. You've got a 5, 3, 3, 2. And that's the, the one in the balanced hand. The others are 4, 4, 3, 2. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> balanced, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we don't have we don't have a six card suit. We don't have a couple double deuce. We don't have a still. So this is a balanced hand, and we open it one no trump. So it has a special meaning. Now the thing that one no trump does that a lot of other bids don't do is it limits the hand immediately. So the hands immediately limit to fifteen, seventeen, and balanced. This is an incredibly important step for the opening hand. Um, if opening bidder can't limit his hand on his first bid, he must strive to do it on his second bid. Because that's the only way the responder can figure out how to place the contract or help direct the auction uh, to something that's makeable. One no trump, of course, is the classic. It's a 15 to 17 balanced. Um, North has 5, 6, 10, 12 points. So one thing North knows right now, and if you look at that sheet of paper and I talk about the game matrix, I probably could have represented it pretty much better. But here we have an invitational hand opposite in responder's hand. Um, a, a, a maximum hand, right? He's got he's got an opening hand, so we know that this this hand North knows immediately. I'm going to play this in game somewhere. I got five, six, ten, twelve points. Did I count that, Ryan? Six, ten, twelve, twelve points. So um, when my partner's got sixteen, we're going to be in game. Where does he want to be in game? Obviously, he wants to be in game in a major. Now he has six spades. Theoretically, he knows there's a spades spade play. He also has a void in diamonds, which is an incredibly important uh, feature. And also, he has four hearts, which means that if his partner has four hearts, uh, he could be very, very, very happy. So what he wants to do is start with some sort of bid. Now, depending on the gadgets you play, I mean, you could just you could transfer this to spades at the two level, or you could transfer it to spades at the four level. Um, because of the void, um, I'm thinking about slam in North's hand, right? So what I'm going to do is let's try this. I'm going to make a transfer bid. Now, right, this bid has is a command. Right? Self has uh, that's the dynamic of this bid. It, it's an order. Partner bid spades, and partner really has no choice to do it. Although if he has 17 and four spades, there are some other responses he can make to let partner know that he's transferring into a good suit, and that opener is at maximum strength. Here, though, just bids two spades. And now, North can assume there's a fit in spades because partner, nine time, 99 times out of 100, will have two spades. 
Um, so he can then try to make a bid that will describe his hand the best way possible. And what he's going to say to partner on this one is, partner, I have a shortage in diamonds. I have a shortage in diamonds. Um, if that helps you out, and I, and I have slam interest, consider your hand and think if that's the best place for me to have shortage. And if it is, perhaps you want to give me um, some sort of signing by bidding an, a, a, a control, you know, first or second round control. And then I'll know that my diamond bid helped you, um, makes your hand better because of my shortage. Now we've been practicing, we're like losers, losing, losers, right? And we know that a shortage in a dummy means that um, if partner has losers, he'll be able to rough them. Now, of course, because it's transferred, then we're going to actually get into a situation where North has the long hand, and we're going to be counting from there. But it still it still shows an advantage. Now, what's good having an ace of diamonds there might be nice. Uh, it's from South's perspective now, having an ace of diamonds is nice. That means somebody's going to, if North is void, he's going to be able to throw a loser on it. But having the queen of diamonds there isn't all that helpful, unless there's a diamond lead. And sometimes there are diamond leads. It's not necessarily the best lead, just because you hear a splinter bid. And if we got a diamond lead from the robot, we'd be really happy, right? Because then we get the ace and the queen. Then we get to two pitches. Um, I doubt the dummy that the uh, robot would lead the diamond, but we'll see. But anyway, to me, it looks like I got two wasted points. I mean, the diamond, it might as well be the two or three, because I'm just going to rough them anyways. So there's two points going out of my hand. You know, had he said he was short in in hearts, that might have been excited because then we might only have one loser. Right? So diamonds is not, you know, hearing about shortage in diamonds or clubs here doesn't do a whole lot for me. Now, it does mean that my partner, who has obviously an opening hand, right, is saying we're going to game. So I know that he has got 12, 13, 14 points outside, not counting diamonds. So that's kind of fun. So if I look at it that way, I have eight, 11 points in the other three suits. And if my partner has 13 or 14 points, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 points, you know, we could have quite a few points, but for us to actually be making a slam here, my partner's gonna need to maybe have the ace, king of hearts, um, king, queen of spades, queen of clubs. We're gonna have to have a whole lot. You know? So my interest in slam is not really high. Um, the other thing that's kind of weird is I don't really have anything to bid for. I don't have a control except, I mean, until I go to four spades. I don't have a heart control. So anyways, we're going to, you know, I can assume from his bid that he's short in diamonds, that he's got a bunch of spades, at least, you know, five or six spades, probably six spades. And uh, because he's gone to a splinter bid, so he's telling us that's the suit. And, um, and so I, I've got a lot of information. But the diamond bid, the dynamics of it are basically asking. It's giving me some information, which is, you know, we've got a game, um, and I'm short in diamonds. But what it's asking me is to reevaluate my hand. In light of a shortage in diamonds, how do you feel about going to slam? Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, I can't really bid anything. I'd have to, you know, I'd have to bid five clubs or four no trump here without having a heart stopper. Now, can I assume that my partner has the ace or king of hearts? You really want him to have the ace hearts, and I don't know that we can assume that. Um, I've lost the queen of diamonds unless they lead it. Um, I'm going to need, you know, we probably have some, maybe eight clubs. We've got nine spades. So there's some good things, some bad things. I'm just going to bid for no trump. Okay, so basically I've taken his information. I've decided I have a wasted queen, but I've got the ace of diamonds, and uh, maybe I can still rough two diamonds, or if I get a lucky, I get a diamond lead. Um, so I bid four no trump. Uh, my partner responds that he has two key cards, the king of spades and the ace of hearts. And he also has the queen of trump. And playing 1430, a five spade bid says just that. So now I look at my hand. I've got to know that we have the king of spades and the queen of spades. So no losers in spades. We have the ace of hearts, so one loser in heart. I don't know what's going on clubs, and we don't have any losers in diamonds. So things are looking pretty tight. Um, 
If I were interested in the grand slant here, which really seems like pushing it, um, I'd, I would really need him to have the king of hearts. And th even then, if he has the king of hearts, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay? So anyways, I could, though, check and see. This says, you know, I have all the key cards. I'm looking for, I'm looking for a grand slam here. Show me a king. Um, and he, would, he might bid six diamonds here, which I would know to mean that I'm void in diamonds. Now, does that really help me? Not really. I wanted to hear about hearts, um, and I can't. And I can do that. I can say right here, this bid is an asking bid, and it's saying, "Tell me, do you have the King of Hearts?" And he'll say, "No, I don't." And we'll get to six here. And we'll get to six. All right. So you can see that if you think through these bids, you've got to make seven, according to the bid. Looks like. Clubs will break, and I will pitch a couple of hearts on the clubs. And, uh, and uh, I'll get the ace of diamonds. So, so the hearts, the two hearts will go on uh, when the clubs start breaking. I'll get two pitches, and uh, which will take care of the two and three hearts. And then the ace of diamonds will take care of the ten of hearts. So I have three pitches in, in the dummy, and I'll make seven. So there no real way to get there. Point of the auction was, listen to how much each bid can convey. How much, and the dynamics of it, how it pushes and pulls. Go, don't go. Um, let me ask you something. Each bid has a, has a language. You, you know the words of the bidding. Now, you can spend a lot of time memorizing what to bid when. But what I'm saying is that it's time to start talking with those words and really conveying to each other um, what your hand is all about. Let's look at another hand. We'll try to be a little bit more succinct this time. So 4, 9, 10, and 5. 15 points again. I've got a 5-card major. Um, I don't have any aces. I can open this one hard, but I'm, I'm looking ahead and I'm thinking, um, Am I going to be happy with that? What am I going to do um, with part partner asking me to bid another suit? I, I don't have another suit. So is this hand worth a one no trump opening is my real question. Now, I don't have any aces, but I do have a solid heart suit. And I have a king queen of clubs, a king jack nine. I have some nice sort of concentrated honors. So I'm going to go ahead and open one no trump. And again, it's a fabulous bid for the responder. He knows I have a flat hand, a balanced hand with 15, 17 points. This time he has 8, 9, 4. He has 13 points. He's kind of semi, I mean, he's balanced as well, right? He's 4, 4, 3, 2. So he's got a four card major, and because he has a doubleton, he's kind of interested, well, should we really be in hearts? And so he'll use a stamen bid. Right? And this is one of the first gadgets we've learned that can play. This bid simply says, I'm invitational or better. 99% of the time, there is a way to use it to show a weak hand and to get to a weak contract. But most of the time, this is saying at least invitational. Um, and partner will say, well, I'll show him my hearts. Can't imagine that's going to matter. Um, but indeed, it does. So notice two clubs ass. The limited hand, simply obeying, says, yes, I have a four card better or better major. Here it is, right? And and North now is really pleased, and he's wondering to himself, now, do I have a slam? Do I have more than game here? Because obviously I can just bid four hearts if that's all I'm interested in. My partner has 16 points, 15, 16 points, 17 points. Let's just give him 16 for fun. That's 20, 24, 25. I have 29 points. So we have 29 points between, and we have a trump suit. Do I have enough here? to start looking for a slam. Well, North's hand is is not, you know, has lots of spaces. It's got the 9-8 of hearts, so the heart suit is looking pretty promising. So assuming that it's, you know, at least four there, um, partner's got to have points elsewhere. Um, is there anything they can do to go further to look for slam? And there is a bid. There is one bid. Um, it's not a bid that people learn. When they learn stamen, it's in the fine print. It's actually there. Um, and that's to bid the major, other major, with a jump. Right? If you bid three spades here, you'd be showing that you have spades. When you jump a level, you're showing that you have a bid. Okay, good. We're in hearts. 
Um, we have a fit, we're going to gain, um, and I'm going to bid this three spades. So this is an artificial bid. Okay? Artificial, just saying, art fit, game four. Art game, art fit, game four. So now, North, what, what is the dynamic of this bid? Well, that's informative. Yeah, we have a game force, but it, it actually does more than that. It suggests a slam because we didn't bid four hearts. And because he's suggesting there might be enough for a slam, it's sort of a command to South. It's saying to South, all right, show me some controls. I want to know where our controls are at. Um, of course, in North's hand, what he's interested in is the clubs. So South looks at his hands and you bid up. When you're showing controls, first or second round, what you bypass, you deny. Right? So if I were to jump past clubs, I'd be denying a club control, which obviously isn't true. I have a club control. So, you know, am I am I in control here? I limited myself, and my partner's looking for slam. Should I do something? Should I just ignore his request? I don't see how I do that. Why not? I have no many points. South has no idea how many points North has. Right? You can't just unilaterally decide, well, I have a crappy hand. His partner is showing interest. South needs to help out. So he'll show the club control. This is promising to North, who now sees that he has all the suits controlled. They have about 29 points. Um, uh, he doesn't really know about diamonds, um, which is sort of a drag, and there's no real way to find out if my, his partner has the king of diamonds. So that could be a loser. Um, he doesn't have the ace of clubs. It'd be nice if his partner had the ace king of clubs, but no guarantees there. But he knows that he has one, two, sorry, he knows he has two, three controls. His partner opened 16, right? He has three aces. Actually, well, three, he knows he has three key cards. His partner must have some. So he might do this. So show, show me your key card. In, with hearts is trump. And so we have the king of hearts. It's the only thing we have. We have three hearts. And we have the queen of hearts, but we'll only show one key card at this point. So let's say we're playing 1430. This would be one or four, 14. One or four key cards. Right now, four no trump is an asking bid. The dynamic is I'm asking you, just give me a quick, give me an answer. And a lot of gadgets are exactly that way. They ask or they tell. Um, if they're asking, then there's a set of responses that you must follow if you're playing some sort of gadget. So here, one or four. He, he knows that he has a eight card heart fit. Doesn't know it's a nine card heart fit. Kind of missing some honors and hearts. Maybe he's starting to feel a little uh, little nervous because he doesn't, you know, he's, he's, he's put us in a heart fit and maybe his partner doesn't have much heart honors. So he's a little nervous, but he has another asking that he can use, okay? which is a queen ask, which is just one up from this response. So he asks him, well, do you at least have the queen of hearts? Right? Now, the problem with this bid is if you ask for the Queen of Hearts, you better be ready to play Slam. Here I have the Queen of Hearts, but so my response is to show my next highest king. Okay? So the response is the positive response is my next highest king, which of course would be the King of Spades. So you see that puts us in to Slam territory, um, and that's enough because there's you know, there's only an eight card fit. Um, doesn't know about the nine card fit, so he thinks he's happy in six hearts. Okay. So um, do we lose club? Uh, and we lose a diamond, so we're going to have a diamond loser that we need to get rid of. Seems like that could be a problem, doesn't it? Yep, he's down one. We've got no heart losers. Um, we've got a spade loser. The ace king, but we got spade loser. So we're going to have to get a Finesse for that. So he, I don't know, he might even go down too. So or he makes. So what's something good happens? Oh, we got an extra. We're going to get to pitch on a club. See it right there? How this suit is longer than this suit? So we can't lose another. And then we're going to have to take the spade finesse at some point. So we can go ahead and pull Trump. Play the king and queen. Play over to the ace of spades. 
now we have this good jack of clubs in which we'll throw the queen of diamonds. Right? And so it all comes down to, um, we might go over and do this just to pull another card. Make him throw away some stuff. You know, play, play, you got no choice but to go for finesse, which works. Pretty much. All right, one more. Let's see if we can get a hand that is not a one no trumpet. There we go. It's not an open one. We've got the dealer. It's all these are random deals, but I've set the constraints so I will always get 24, 25 points at least, and that south is always the dealer. 14, 15. Here we go. 5, 6, 9. Here we go. 5, 4, 2, but not enough points. This thing that comes up is called the deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the north hand, sorry, the south hand, and I'm going to make sure that I have an opening. Okay, so here we have 17 points, right? and it's an unbalanced hand, a single suited unbalanced hand. Right? We're 6, 3, 3, 1. Open it across. So even an opening bid conveys a message. Here, it, you know, we're saying we don't probably don't have a major. We have, you know, 12 or 21 points or so. If if you're either 15 or 17 or 20 to 21 in balance, then I'm then I would not be opening one club. So there's all sorts of information already being passed with the single grunt of one club. Right? Caveman talk one club. Look how much information is actually out there about. Um, responder has 6, 8, 9, 10, 11 points. 11 points as a responder is generally an invitational hand, right? So he knows that there is a chance for game already. You know, if there's a partner, is that, it, you know, whenever there's a media, a minimum opener, obviously an invitational hand, then it's a maybe hand. Maybe we got game, game maybe we don't, right? But he knows game is, and is possible. He's always asking, is this game possible? Sure is. So what does he bid? Of course, he bids his hearts. So now comes the point in an auction that's critical, and I think sometimes that can get overlooked. The one heart is what I call the ambiguous major. It could be four hearts and five points, or it could be um, all the rest of the hearts in the deck and all the rest of the points in the deck. I mean, it's ambiguous. We have no idea. It's a totally useless bid, except for the fact we know he has four plus hearts. And if we had four hearts, that would make bidding easy. We don't have it. We don't have four spades, so that's not a bid for us. Do we want to bid one no trump? Well, no. I mean, we'd love to because we can limit our hand to 14 points that way, but we'd also be saying we're balanced, which isn't true. We're unbalanced. We're 6, 3, 3, 1. So what we need to do is bid the clubs. Okay. And the, the club bid will limit the hand somewhat. If we jumped, we would be showing, you know, a good 15 or 16, 17 points. When, you know, so there's some advantage to limiting, but when we bid two clubs, we haven't limited our whole hand, hand a whole lot. It could be 15 points, but it could be a bad 16. We have 7, 14. We have 3, 17. So here, right? 17. So here we do want to jump, right? So we have get, we, we bid our hand. We've announced we're, we've announced we are unbalanced, single suited hand, and we've jumped to show that we have, you know, a good 16, 17, 18 points. We have a good hand. And a bid like this is, I call it virtually forcing. Okay. It's basically saying to the partner, you, you know, you already showed me five or six points, but I'm telling you, if you got eight points or so, we're, we've got a game. Okay. So it's virtually forcing. Basically, if responder answered the first time and had more than just a mere pulse, right? if he was more than just, if, if more than just being on life support and eking out a bid, if he had more than he's really got to think about and think through. Now, what is North to do? 
And he knows there's game, right? He's got 6, 8, 10, 11 points, and his partner's probably got 17. He knows there's like 20 points or so. He knows his partner has long clubs. So in his heart of hearts, he knows that there's, in fact, five clubs here. Right? We're going to be at least five clubs. Is there something better that we can do? Well, he'd love to hear more about the hearts. He'd love to hear more about the hearts. Does his partner have three hearts? So, but um, bidding it, again, is not necessarily forcing when we rebid a suit, it's not necessarily forcing. Um, I think if I, I would consider it forcing, like virtually forcing, if, I, if my partner agrees here, I'm going to game somehow. So he could bid his hearts again, saying, partner, I have extra length. Or he could just bid something that is forcing. Right? Now, I think at one point, we took one of the first priorities of an auction is we, we um, we look for a major game. If we can't look for a major game, then we look for a no trump game. And then if somebody puts a gun to our head, we'll bid a minor game. Right? You don't want to make 11 tricks just to get to 400 or 600 when you can make four of a major or, or, or three of a no trump to get to the same points or more. So North will probably think, okay, so we have, I have two clubs for them, good ones too, because I got the queen. So if we can't play in hearts, then I would really like to play in no trump, right? But I don't have a good spade. I don't have a spade stopper. So he might just make a forcing bid. And what does that mean? Well, he just bids three diamonds. Can North, uh, can South pass us three diamonds? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right? We don't, and the reason is because you can ask yourself one question in this opener. How many points does my partner have? Don't know. Okay. We know he has hearts, and he's made a forcing bit of diamonds. Uh, so he must have some diamonds. Um, he clearly wants me to keep bidding. He thinks there's a game. And, um, and, and uh, I don't know if we have a club bid, but he wants to know um, about the major. Basically saying, can we stop in, is it possible for us to stop in a major? I mean, to stop in a no trump game. Can we go for nine tricks instead of trying to make 11 in clubs? Yeah, that my hand suddenly looks okay. You know, partner has hearts. I'm going to show him three spades. Or I could even go to three no trump. So bid the spades, leave him in control. See, I'm going to have a spade stopper. Or since I have king third, and he must have some, I could just bid three no trump. So the three diamonds is, has a dynamic here, right? Which is, um, I'm forcing you to keep bidding here, partner. Um, if you think about what we want to do, obviously we'd like to play in three no trump as opposed to five clubs. Is it still? Is, can, is that possible? Is a no trump game possible here? Um, I have some concerns about something in the majors because I didn't just go ahead and bid it, right? And since I bid hearts already, I think you can guess. But my problem is spades, right? So I look at my spades, I got three. There's a chance we only have five of them together. But I got the ace, which means I should be able to hold off to the third trick. And as long as the spades aren't badly divided, we should be okay. So I did three no trump. So that's just, I got six of them, right? So now I know that we can, can hold off in probably one round, I would want to hold off. And then, so I got one spade. I've got one, two, three hearts. That's four. I got three clubs. Um, that's seven. And then I got two diamonds, right? That king, queen, king is going to always be two tricks. So there's nine tricks all together. So what I'm going to need, and the problem is I'm going to have to lose a trick in the diamonds. Or the clubs could break. That's the other thing you're talking about. Clubs are 3-2, right? I got eight of them, but clubs are 3-2. Then I don't even need to worry about the diamonds because I'll have all these club tricks. So just to be safe, though, I'll hold off one time because it won't hurt. And that just protects me against a bad spade split. Which doesn't exist yet, of course. So what I'll probably want to do is play that king of hearts. That's called unblocking unblock that so that when I come over here to the club, yeah, well, wait, the problem, yeah, yeah, I'll do it this way, I'll come over this way. They really need them to break here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to give up the lead. And I need to worry about it.
taking a chance here, aren't I? Because if the clubs do not split, then they may be able to get, um, in addition to their spade tricks, they may be able to get some par four. But now I'm just going to flop back over and hope to break. And I get lucky. Then I get all the club tricks, I, and I have to give up two tricks at the end. So, playing two club tricks. So, anyways, that's enough. You see the point, though, that when we're, if you, the bidding can be, is, is, is a language. Um, it's, it's in that one book that I mentioned in the notes in, in uh, Kit Wilkie's book. He calls it Bringlish. He wants an H in English. Um, Bringlish. Because in using these caveman fronts, you know, we need to have a conversation like civilized people, like a polite conversation where I'm giving information, asking for information, information, where I'm telling you to bid more, or I'm telling you exactly what to bid, or I'm listening to you and you're saying bid this, and I follow them, do exactly what you tell me. I'm always thinking about two questions all the time. Is game possible? Because when game's not possible, you really want to get out as cheap as you can. Is game possible? And to, get, to understand whether game is possible, you have to know whether your partner is limited dexterity. How many points have they shown? Right? And then if you think, oh, well, they're unlimited, well, if they're unlimited, game is always possible. So an unlimited bid, the dynamic of the bid is going to be totally forced. So anyways, I'll send this along with the notes. Sorry it took, I just, it's Monday, and I just got carried away this weekend and never got it taken care of. But I'll send this and the notes for Wednesday now, and I'll see you in class.